What's up my SEO family? Happy to be here with you guys for another video. Let's talk about on-page SEO. I wanna give you guys my complete guide and this is also gonna serve as a little checklist that you guys can use to analyze your own pages. So this video applies to e-commerce pages, blog posts, or literally any type of landing page. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna be using this affiliate marketing for beginners article from Ahrefs as an example. We're gonna be critiquing it and we're gonna go down the checklist, see what they're doing well and what they could be improving. So let's get started. I'm also gonna be opening up WordPress to show you guys how to make some of these changes on a WordPress website. So as a starting point, we know that we need to focus on one main keyword, right? So we need to focus on one topic, one idea, one main keyword. And that's the keyword that we're gonna put in all these different places for our on-page SEO. The first place that we wanna focus on is the title, right? So let's check out this Ahrefs article. I like to use a Chrome extension called SEO Minion. You guys can see it right here. And I like to use it to analyze other websites on page SEO, right? So we have right here, this is the title that they have. And then this is also the meta description, right? So they've done this really well. They've added in that main keyword, which is affiliate marketing or affiliate marketing for beginners. They're both in there and this looks pretty good. They're slightly over the character limit, but apart from that, it looks great. Second thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that that meta description also includes that main keyword, right? Oftentimes, Google is gonna change up your own meta description, but it's still important to make sure that we've added our own with our main keyword attached. So also just to quickly show you guys how we would change this in WordPress, I like to use, this is just an example article that I copied, but I just wanna show you guys how we change this. I like to use a plugin called Yoast, so Yoast SEO, and it gives us this fantastic preview of what it's gonna look like on a mobile and a desktop result, what this article is gonna look like online, right? And so this is exactly what we're working with. So we have the title that I've already added up here. I can change this, best ways to brush your teeth at night. And we're gonna see that this is also going to change the title down here, right? So we can manually just change this up and say 11 best ways to keep teeth healthy and now we have a brand new title right so we want to make sure we're maximizing that title space and that we're also including our main keyword main keyword here i think would be healthy teeth regardless so we can also go in and change this meta description make sure that again it includes one of those main keywords right so starting off we're looking at something pretty basic we want to make sure that we have that title and that meta description properly optimized next guys we want to make sure that we have one h1 right so we're going to be talking about headings a lot more later on in this video but the main thing here is that headings are an essential structural element inside on page seo what this helps us do is basically break up our page into different sections the first and the most important heading is this h1 and ideally we only want to have one h1 again if we use this seo minion chrome extension we're going to see that we have one h1 and it's this one right here so it's the same as the title title tag and if we just quickly inspect element we can also see that it's here right so we see that h1 over there in the top left in purple there's nothing wrong with adding in multiple h1s but i would recommend to stick to one h1 and if you need to add more headings then make use of h2s h3s we're going to cover all of that in just a moment so next thing we want to talk about is the keyword in the url right and if we quickly check this hrefs url we see that yes it is in the url having a keyword in your url is a very small ranking factor however if our url structure allows us to then i highly recommend adding in that keyword if it's too complicated and you're going to need to do a bunch of redirects and mess up a bunch of things then i recommend just leaving things as they are but whenever we can i recommend adding in that keyword in the url next guys i want to talk about the content right the actual written content that we're going to add to this page so number one thing here is the quality of this content obviously needs to be very high if you are an expert on the topic that you're writing about 
I suggest that you hire one, right? We want to make sure that we're writing the best resource available for that topic, right? So the main thing here is what can you do to improve the content that's out there? So I recommend before we write anything, just quickly take a look at some of the competitors that we have. What type of content have they written? What does it look like? What angle did they take? And how can we improve it, right? Is there a specific case study that we can add, an example that we have from our experience that we can add that adds that extra level of detail that takes that article over the top. This is probably one of the hardest parts of SEO, being able to constantly create very high quality content that goes above and beyond your competitors. Another important check for on-page SEO is making sure that we have an author attached to that blog post, right? We wanna make sure that we can show our readers and Google that the person that's writing the article is an expert on that subject, right? So it's great to attach an author to that. And if they have an author page, then that's even better, right? So we see that Ahrefs here does this phenomenally well. Also some external links to other social profiles to have that social proof, right? Now let's dive a little deeper into the content. So one of the main things that people do once they land on a blog post is they like to scan it before they actually decide to read it, right? And so we need to make sure that our content is scannable. And this is tied in with making sure that our content is properly structured. We add structure to our content with headings and subheadings, right? So with H1s, H2s, H3s, so on and so forth. Ideally, we want the structure of our content to look something like like this so we want it to be properly broken down with subheadings from H2s all the way down to H6s. And we see that Ahrefs does this phenomenally well, right? So if I just quickly highlight over this, we're gonna see that this is gonna be an H2. So we see it right here. And then right under it as a sub idea inside this heading, inside this new section of the content, we're gonna have an H3, right? And this is exactly what we need to do to help our content become not only more readable and more scannable, but also to help Google understand all the different ideas that we're listing out for this specific article. So the use of headings is extremely important, but we also wanna make sure that we're adding the right things to those headings, right? We wanna make sure that we're adding related keywords and other relevant keywords to help give that article an extra level of relevance, right? So where could we find those relevant and related keywords? We could go to Ahrefs, for example, and quickly type in affiliate marketing, see some related terms, and we're gonna have a bunch of ideas being listed here. And for a free resource, we can also go to answer the public. Let me just open this up. So we can just type in our keyword, affiliate marketing as an example. And now we're gonna have a bunch of different ideas related to affiliate marketing, right? So these are two different resources that we can use to fill up all the different headings of our articles. Another important on-page check that we wanna make sure we're doing is seeing if we're adding any lists or bullet points to our content. So again, not only does this break this up and help the user read through, make it a bit more scannable, but if you guys remember my featured snippet video, which you guys can find right here. So depending on the type of content we're writing, we can actually improve our chances of coming up for a featured snippet. So this is a perfect example right here. Why do affiliate marketing? Ahrefs is giving us a really quick list that can be extracted onto a featured snippet. Now let's talk about internal links, right? So internal links are an essential part of on-page SEO and one of the most powerful things we can add to our content, right? They help pass page authority from one page to another through that internal link. Three quick checks that we can do here is, do we have a descriptive anchor text, right? Let me just quickly find a relevant internal link. So this is a perfect example. Within this affiliate marketing post, we have this internal link right here. So optimize your videos for SEO. That descriptive anchor text is telling Google exactly why we're using that link and why it's relevant inside of this article. Now, if we click into it, it's taking us to another Ahrefs blog post that is optimized specifically for YouTube SEO. So that anchor text fits in very well and it passes that check. Another thing we need to focus on is if the internal link is actually useful, right? So does it make sense within the context of that specific text? Here's an example that I don't think fits 100%, right? So they're talking about starting a blog, how it's relatively easy and cheap. And then they're saying, once your site is up, we can optimize it for search engines. This is a slight push into a WordPress SEO top 20 tips and best practices. 
I think this is slightly forced, but I understand where Ahrefs is coming in with that internal link. So we do wanna make sure that our internal links are always useful and they're not just forced just for the sake of having another internal link. An additional thing about internal links is if we have an e-commerce space, we do want to add breadcrumbs. It might not always be useful for a, for a blog or a, or a specific landing page, but if we have an e-commerce website that has a lot of different category and subcategory pages, we want to include breadcrumbs. Those internal links are not only gonna help users, but also search engines navigate through your website. Now let's quickly talk about external links. So external links help show Google that we're linking out to helpful resources that add credibility to our content, right? So here's a perfect example. So we're talking about Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. He made over 100,000 in December, 2017. And when we click into that, it's actually taking us to that article where it's talking about how much income he made for that specific month. So this is a perfect example of an external link that helps the credibility of this specific article. When we're talking about affiliate marketing, we're linking out to a relevant resource that's helping us make this resource a bit more credible. External links are very important. Another quick tip about external links is that if we have external links to affiliate or sponsored content or products, we do wanna make sure that we add the sponsor tag. That's gonna help Google understand exactly why we're adding that specific link and it is a must in 2022. So that's definitely an important check we need to have. And a final thing is we do, once we've published our content, we do just wanna make sure that there aren't any broken links. Now guys, let's move on to talk about user experience. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna plug this specific link into GT metrics, right? So I've already done that right here and we can see a pretty ridiculous score for Ahrefs. These guys definitely know what they're doing, right? So this is exactly Exactly what we want to see when we're taking a look at the page speed and at the core web vitals, right? So all these different categories of your website's performance, it's really important to make sure that we have that under control. The good thing about GT Metrics is that if GT Metrics notices that your website is taking a long time to load, this waterfall is gonna give you an exact breakdown of what's taking the longest to load so it can help you identify what you can do next. So perhaps you see there is a specific image that's taking a while to load because maybe it isn't compressed. So we can find all those issues right here on GT Metrics. So that's a great resource to start off at. I also really recommend adding your website to Google Search Console. You're gonna get a lot of data directly from Google and they're gonna give you specific page scores relating to your website. So if we just quickly check out this website, and we go to page experience, for example, we're gonna see a bunch of different metrics relating to good URLs, how fast it is, and what Google thinks of our website, right? So we also have Core Web Vitals down here. So a bunch of different data, so poor URLs, URLs that need improvement, so on and so forth. So a lot of great data here. And also mobile usability, that's also a really important check inside of on-page SEO, right? We just wanna make sure that all of our pages can be accessed through mobile and through any other responsive mediums, whether that's a tablet or anything else. All right, guys, let's talk about images. So we're just gonna quickly run down a few things. We wanna have unique images that are high quality. That's really important. Uh, we wanna make sure that they're compressed and they're not killing our load speed. It's really useful to run that GT metrics check. That way we can see exactly what's slowing us down. If anything, we then wanna make sure that we have descriptive file names and alt tags, right? So let me show you guys how we can do that on WordPress. I have added in this image right here. And if we go into this settings button, we can set this alt text. I've just quickly set that in, right? So this is exactly what we wanna do and we can save that there. One last thing I wanna add for user experience is we do wanna think about ads, right? Have we added in any ads to our content? Are we pushing them too hard? Is it disturbing our user experience? This is something that's really important to consider. I understand that there's a lot of you that make money through ads, but we do wanna make sure that that doesn't jeopardize the experience that our users are having on our pages, right? So the last thing on my checklist is structured data. If we haven't already, we need to be adding in structured data. It's gonna help us get those rich results. If you guys want help with adding structured data on your website, I recommend you guys check out this video where I cover that topic in depth. Thanks for staying till the end of the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.